We live in a world where it's offensive to preach the gospel of Jesus and to talk about his name. And I'm here to talk about it. Welcome to the Jesus is Offensive podcast. Yo, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Jesus Offensive podcast. I am your host, Taylor Werfelman, as always. What's going on, everybody? Um, Hope you guys are doing well. I hope you guys enjoyed, uh, if you follow our Instagram, uh, that little video we put out a few, uh, what was that, a week ago almost. Um, I think it touched a lot of people. I know for me, um, it was super enjoyable to just make something that um, is Christian, uh, but is also beautiful, is not cheesy, um, and touches people in in a special way. So that was really fun. If you haven't seen that, uh, go check it out at our Instagram, which is Jesus is offensive, no spaces. Um, and, uh, yeah, check it out because it's at least to me, it's pretty cool. And, um, it also gives a little sneak peek of kind of the big news, which is that we're going to be putting out a podcast every Friday, uh, once again, like we used to back in the old days. So hooray. Um, funny enough, I was supposed to put one out on Friday, uh, this last Friday. And if you follow me on Instagram, which again, I really recommend going down and following us, uh, it costs you nothing. And it also keeps you updated on everything with the podcast. But basically I was going to record a podcast. I got pretty sick and, uh, yeah, this is my first day recovering. So I decided it's time to make a podcast, catch up because, uh, we're going to, we're going to do Fridays and I'm not letting anything stop us. (laughs) Um, but yeah, sorry guys, if you hear me cough or anything like that, um, you could probably tell my voice is a little husky <laughs> speaking of, but yeah, a lot of big things for the podcast that I've kind of kept under wraps, but one of them being, um, that every Friday we're going to be doing an episode now. Also something kind of cool. Uh, we have uh, podcasting arms, which is pretty awesome, which is what I'm actually using right now to, to podcast, which means I can sit back a little bit. And before you guys probably didn't know, I had a little mic sitting on my desk and I would always have to like lean in and like really focus on getting my, my mouth close to the mic. Um, because you know, I want the audio to sound good and, and, uh, my back would hurt and it was uncomfortable and it just didn't really work out great, but <clears throat> you know, you work with what you got, but, um, we just got two podcasting arms, which is awesome so that we can do more interviews. And, uh, also, so when I'm doing my solo stuff, uh, I can sit back a little bit more and, uh, feel a little bit relaxed. So yeah, it feels, feels official. <laughs> um, it probably doesn't change anything on your guys' end. Um, but yeah, uh, other than that, <clears throat> We're coming to the close of season four, which is actually absolutely insane that we're going to be going on five seasons of this podcast. I mean, obviously the episodes are only 10. I mean, the seasons are only 10 episodes, but still like that's, that's a ton of content. You guys, I'm, I'm honestly surprised myself. Um, but yeah, it's all thanks to you guys and all the support. We're also almost at 10,000 streams all time. Uh, so keep streaming, keep sending the podcast, um, yeah, if you want to get signed up to be notified every time we drop a podcast, um, go to our website, um, <clears throat> go to jesusoffensive.com slash sign uh, up. Sign, uh, I forget what the word is for the, the line uh, on your keyboard, but uh, dash, I think it is, uh, and then up, um, and you can put your email in there um, to get notified. Because also, <clears throat> last little, uh, thing to update. We are dropping apparel very soon. Um, I was hoping to have it before the new year, but you know, things happen how they happen. So they're going to be here in the new year. Um, they're being printed as we speak. They're super high quality, great stuff. We went with a different t-shirt blank than last round, uh, in a different color with a different design. Um, just to give, some newness, um, for people who maybe didn't like that style as much and <clears throat> just trying different things. We want to make some really cool Christian art for you guys. So we have three, <coughs> three new items dropping. Um, <clears throat> and that should be, not should be, that will be January 13th. 
2023, we will be dropping collection two, which will have three items, uh, four items. I'm sorry. Um, with new designs, new stickers, um, tons of cool stuff. So I'm really excited about that. So again, if you want to get signed up, signed up to be notified when those drop, just go to jesusoffensive.com forward slash sign dash up. I think it's a dash hit return. Boom. You're there. Put your email in there. So yeah. Anyways, thank you guys again for all the support and let's get into it. So this episode, we're going to be talking about, um, well, we're titling it, they will cast out demons. Um, and I know I've talked about demons on this platform. Um, a myriad, I don't know what the word is a, a lot of times. (laughs) Um, but Uh, today I figured, you know, some people have told me in the past, like, Hey, why don't you make like a simplistic way of explaining the deliverance stuff? Because again, the times I have talked about it, it's been kind of, um, deeper discussions about things, kind of like the unity and deliverance one I did that was pertaining to a very certain thing that a certain group and a certain, um, situation that was happening in uh, the community of believers. So, Today, we're going to be just talking about generally uh, the practice of doing deliverance. I'm going to get some water. <laughs> Whew. Lord, get me through this one. So, yeah. So, we're going to be also finishing season four with a banger. We're going to be doing uh, the law versus grace, a part two to finish that saga up. Um, that will be the last episode. That will be um, this coming Friday, I believe. Hopefully I can get that done. Well, anyways, let's pray. Uh, dear Lord God, I just thank you for um, <clears throat> healing my body, Lord, and helping me to not be sick anymore. God, I pray that you would be with my throat right now and my my voice. You'd help me to just preach your word, um, nothing stopping me or impeding me, Lord. Um, I bind every spirit that will want to speak during um, this talk, Lord, that your name and your um, truth would come across today, God, that uh, obviously deliverance is a topic that many are scared of, many people don't like, many people are against, God. So I just pray right now for a uh, softening of hearts, Lord, and an opening of ears, God. Give the people ears to hear, not just ears, you know, like you said, they have ears, but they don't hear, they have eyes, but they don't see. Let them see and let them hear um, this message uh, tonight, Lord. Um, we just thank you, Lord, for everything that you do or for how incredible and insane you are, God, and just how amazing, how amazing you are, Lord. We just praise your name. None of us would be here without you. Um, pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> Sweet. So, yeah, so we're going to be talking about Casting out demons. And I know for some of you, this might be a little bit simple in terms of casting out demons. And you're like, I want meat. Um, But I think it's really good to know this stuff. And also, I think it's good to keep it simple. And I'll define what I mean by that. Because I think some people get um, (coughs) extremely obsessed with uh, deliverance books and uh, doctrines of deliverance and all this stuff, which is not necessarily a bad thing, um, in itself. It's more of just for people who have never done deliverance, we need to just be focused on the things that the Bible talks about deliverance. Like I get that people want to know it all before they get into it and they do it, but reading 20 billion books is not going to prepare you for deliverance. Let me tell you, um, we've cast out probably over a thousand demons in our time of doing ministry. And again, no glory to ourselves. It's all Jesus doing the casting. We've just been, you know, allowing him to use us. But the point is, is the most we learned was from doing it and from walking in faith, not necessarily from reading books. Books can only prepare you so much, but knowing what the Bible says about demons is numero uno important. So, um, that's why we're going to just do a simple deliverance thing. And I think even for people that are, uh, know a lot about deliverance, have read a lot of books. I think this will be good because you need to keep it simple. If you haven't, if you're not practicing deliverance in your daily life, in your daily discipleship of others, in your ministry, then uh, you need to go back to simple and not think of it as so abstract and obscure. So the thing that I always tell people, the most simplest truth is that Jesus cast out demons, the disciples cast out demons, uh, Paul cast out demons, and we are to cast out demons. Okay, so that's what the Bible says. Um, That's the truth. 
Uh, I think everyone who listens to this podcast at this point knows that, you know, the gifts did not cease. But if you're one of those people, um, I'll just leave you with this. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, so if he introduced these gifts, um, he is still the same. Uh, so if the Holy Spirit gives these gifts, the Holy Spirit has not changed. The Holy Spirit has not stopped giving those gifts out. Um, and Mark 16 is the number one uh, for me, although there are many others, ways to defend this point. And now, obviously, many people will go down to the footnotes and say, well, many manuscripts say that, you know, verses 9 through 20 weren't in the original manuscripts. Well, here's how I see it. They're in the Bible. And if you actually do some research into that, they're in like 99% of the manuscripts. <laughs> So the devil will use literally anything to try to um, get deliverance out of our mouth. Think about it. Um, he doesn't want his little minions cast out of people. He wants to continue to uh, wreak havoc in people. Remember the devil, the Bible says that the devil roars around like a lion seeking someone who he might devour, right? He's trying to kill us. He's trying to devour us. This is no joking matter. This is no um, <clears throat> silly little thing. And so also for us to think that demons are a rare thing that you just see in Africa is um, far too, much too far a sim simpli simplific simplification of the matter. Um, no one in Jesus' time was uh, even remotely, um, what's the word, uh, <clears throat> Uh, surprised at demons or casting them out. I mean, they would come to Jesus as my son, my daughter, they have a demon. Um, so we know that this was a semi-normal thing. And I think that's how we should see it in our world today. So let's open up to Mark 16. I've quoted it many times on this podcast, but <laughs> it's very important. And although people again will say, well, this isn't in the original manuscripts. Okay. But <clears throat> although that's false, um, if you still want to go with that logic, um, you can find all these things to be true throughout the Bible. It's just, this is, I like using this first because this is where it's all put together in one place. So, um, when Jesus is about to descend, you know, he says to the disciples, go into the world, preach the gospel to all creation, <clears throat> all that good stuff. Let's pick up at verse 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. So all who believe. What will they do? The first thing, in my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up snakes with their hands. And when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They will place their hands on sick people and they will get well. Okay, so I find this super interesting as well because people always say, oh, well, you know, uh, tongues is a gift. Healing is a gift. We can't all do that. Um, but that's a whole different conversation. But for one, this does say that these signs, they will accompany those who believe. So if you believe, <coughs> if you believe, these signs will follow you. So do you believe in Jesus? I'm guessing the answer is yes. <coughs> Next question to ask yourself, do these signs follow you? Now, the person who wants to debate me will say, well, then what about, well, Taylor, do you pick up snakes with your hands and when, and do you drink deadly poison? Listen, I'm not here to test God, but if there was a snake um, and God instructed me to pick it up, then yes, of course. And I believe we drink deadly poison every day we eat and drink the food provided to us by um, the world today. But <clears throat> I think the point by uh, verse 18 there, the beginning is literally saying that we have dominion over all things. Now, some people have said that the snakes refer to demons as well because um, Jesus says in Luke 10, you know, I've given you... Uh, domain over uh, to crush scorpions and all these things. And he's talking about demons. Um, but anyway, anyways, let's just stick with verse 17. In my name, they will drive out demons. That's the number one thing. Now, there is no gift of deliverance. Let's get that clear. That's not in the Bible. There's no such thing as, well, you have the gift of deliverance. So you can't one say, well, your calling is deliverance or your ministry is deliverance or your gift is deliverance. All of our callings is deliverance. All of our callings are to preach the gospel. All of our callings are to heal the sick, to help people. <coughs> wow, I'm really coughing. <clears throat> Lord, give me strength. <clears throat> um, yeah, 
Sorry, I hope I'm not grossing you out with my cough. So it's very important to know. But it says, all who believe, they will cast out demons. Do you believe? Yes. Do you cast out demons? No. Okay, why not? We have to look at our lives and if they don't line up with the Bible, change something about our life. Not say, well, give all these excuses. <clears throat> these are the signs of those who believe. This is how the world will know. So, anyways, that's the basic basis of everything. So, the number one question that comes up instantly, and I'm sure some of you have been thinking it, are like, okay, yeah, that's cool, but Christians, can they have demons? Because oftentimes, as Christians, we surround ourselves with Christians, so it's like, well, who am I supposed to cast demons out of, you know? So, the, the number one thing we need to talk about first is the word possessed. <clears throat> now, whenever we see demons in the Bible, they always say the word uh, possessed in English. Now, the bummer about that is it's it's one of those times where you need to look at the Greek. Um, it's one of the worst translations in the Bible because that's not what the original Greek word means. The original Greek word, and I'm going to try to say this, is demonizo, demon, demonizomai. <laughs> um, properly in English, it comes out to be demonized. And the way they defined it is coming under the power of a demon. Okay. So being demonized is a lot different than possessed because possession, um, that implies that something is owning you. Uh, nothing owns a child of God except for God. And that's a whole other topic. But the point is, is I, I personally don't believe that anyone is possessed by a demon. I think demons don't possess us, but we possess demons, if that makes sense. Like we have demons, uh, but they don't own us. <clears throat> But anyways, again, the word in Greek, get possessed out of your mind. I don't want to hear another question. Well, I, you know, I'm not possessed or I'm oppressed. None of those words are in the Bible when it comes to demons. There's one word, it's demonized, okay? And there's also no doctrine for, well, there's a demon on the outside attacking me. Although I think that is probably true in terms of some, th some things in life. The only instance we have in the New Testament of someone being attacked from, quote unquote, the outside is Jesus when the devil himself appears and is tempting him. One, the devil's not tempting you, it's demons. Um, because I don't think any of us are important enough for the devil yet to be tempting us himself. <clears throat> but again, the word is demonized. So that's very important. Get possessed, get oppressed, get all these Christianese words out of your brain and just go with demonized. Because that just means you're under the power of a demon. Something... A demon is causing, is, is able to operate in your life, is able to do something in your life where he negates your self-control in some way. Let me get a sip of water. <clears throat> okay, so let's go to Luke 11, another one of my favorite passages. I probably talked about it on here before, but <clears throat> people say can Christians have demons, right? Uh, I forgot to mark which verses. Um, okay. Let's go to verse 24. Uh, Luke eleven twenty four. 24. <coughs> when an impure spirit comes out of a person, it goes through arid places seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself, and they go in and live there. And the final condition of that person is worse, is worse than the first. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah. So this is when Jesus is talking about, you know, they start accusing him. Oh, you're driving out demons by Beelzebub, basically demons by demons. And Jesus is like, how could I do that? That would be a kingdom against itself. But then he starts talking about what happens when a demon leaves someone. So it goes through arid places, seeking rest, does not find it. Then it says, I'll return to the house I left, right? The person I left. When it arrives to the person, it finds the house, the person's soul or whatever, swept clean and put in order. Then it goes, it takes seven other spirits more wicked than itself and they go in and live there. Okay. So the key is here is he arrives and he finds that the house has not changed at all, that there's still room for the spirits. 
So the spirits come right back in and they're actually worse than the first. <clears throat> so with knowing this, and we've actually used this with people to say, hey, make sure you really want to serve Jesus because if you don't fill where the demons come out with Jesus, and I'm not just talking about the Holy Spirit, but like closing the doors to sin, demons come in through sin. That is the number one way demons come in. And I'll show you that in the Bible later. But um, but if the demon comes back and finds the houses still living in that sin, still has the doors wide open, then it's going to just bring in all of its buddies. So to me, this is a big proof on why you don't want to deliver or cast out demons. I'm going to be using deliver and cast out demons as the same term. That's what deliverance means. It means to cast out demons. <laughs> the ministry of casting out demons. So, you know, you don't want to cast out demons out of a non-believer. Why? Because if they don't fill that with Jesus, if they don't truly surrender their life, <clears throat> they don't turn from their sin. The final condition of that person is worse because the demons will just come back. So that's why, yeah, although many homeless people you see on the street, yeah, they probably have demons, but I'm not going to just go grab their head and start commanding the demons to leave because I know they're not going to fill it with Jesus. And Jesus didn't even do that in the Bible. So <clears throat> I think this is big evidence for why we shouldn't be doing deliverance on non-believers. And if we shouldn't do, be doing deliverance on non-believers and Jesus said, do deliverance, then who are we supposed to do deliverance on? Okay, that's a really big question. I'll give you another scenario here. Acts chapter 8 Verses four through eight, Philip and Philip is preaching. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the signs he performed, they all paid close attention to what he said. For with shrieks, impure spirits came out of many, and many who were paralyzed or lame were healed. <clears throat> so, <coughs> so what happened here? He proclaimed the Messiah. He performed signs. And then what? With shrieks, impure spirits, demons, came out of many. <clears throat> so these are people who had already heard the gospel, right? Yet demons were still coming out. And so we have to start asking ourselves, okay, if Jesus told us to cast out demons, but Christians can't have demons, then why cast out demons if I can just convert people to Jesus and their all their demons just go away? See how that doesn't make sense? Why would a third of Jesus' ministry be casting out demons if he could just teach them the gospel and they would be cleansed of their demons? Or why did Paul cast out demons when he could have just preached the gospel, got them born again, and poof, all your demons are gone? This does not make sense. So there would be no reason for deliverance because it would be much easier. Hey, let's just make a convert and all their demons will leave. No, it's because both are true. You need to be born again and demons must be cast out. <clears throat> again, if Christians can't have demons, then where did they go? And why did Jesus say to cast out demons and not to cast them out of unbelievers? <coughs> <coughs> And like I said, Jesus only delivered and healed people who came to him. So they believed, right? <clears throat> they went to Jesus thinking, you can help me. You can set me free. You can save me. That's believing who they believed who Jesus said he was. They believed that and that's why they came to him. And then Jesus would deliver them. Again, Jesus didn't just go to random people and just start casting demons out of them because they were not repentant, they did not believe in him, and they were not surrendered. And Luke 11 points out why that's a dangerous thing. <clears throat> and this is how I prove to a lot of people that Christians can have demons too, is let's put our pride aside and ask ourselves, do I have self-control in every single matter? Most of the time the answer is no for Christians who have not been delivered from demons. Well, then I say, okay, well, do you have the Holy Spirit? Well, yeah, of course. Okay, well, you have to, it's two conclusions. Either your Holy Spirit doesn't work correctly because you don't have self-control in this area or there's a demon stopping you from being able to be in complete self-control. That's how I see it. That's the fruit that I've seen from deliverance. And uh, 
I think that's backed up by the Bible. These, some of these guys, you know, it said the demons threw him in the fire. The demons made him cut himself. The demons, uh, you know, made the woman's back, um, crippled. And we'll get to all those stories in a bit, but, um, uh, there was st- something stopping their free will. Right. And, and I'm going to jump ahead here, but the demoniac or whatever that everyone always calls him, you know, um, that runs to Jesus at the tombs and like throws himself down. Uh, everyone says, Oh yeah, he was like super possessed, but he still had the ability to run to Jesus and throw himself at Jesus feet because he knew he needed deliverance. So he did have control of certain things, but then the demon starts speaking out of him. So he had lack of control in other aspects. <clears throat> and this is how we identify demons. What can you not control in your life by the power of the Holy spirit? I don't mean by your flesh, but and again, you can't always blame demons, but um, that's a really good way to know. So can Christians have demons? I, in my opinion, yes. Um, and again, all the understanding I gave you makes it clear. I think where people get stuck up is the demonized part. You know, they keep thinking the word possessed. Well, I can't be possessed. Jesus loves me and I am his daughter. Yes, he does. But um, you have sinned. You have given open doors to demons. And if they have not been cast out, Jesus commanded us to cast out demons. So they didn't magically leave when you became a Christian uh, or Jesus wouldn't have instructed us to cast out demons in the first place. But when you understand that it's demonized, you can be a Christian and be bothered by a demon. And I think a lot of us, they, especially the people that are probably listening to this podcast right now, you don't understand the freedom that you actually could have. (laughs) So let's put away our pride when us as Christians are saying, well, I don't think I have a demon. I'm a Christian. I'm, I've been good my whole life. Listen, I could preach a whole sermon on how good I've been uh, as a kid. Uh, great kid, didn't do anything wrong, haven't had sex before marriage, blah, 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 blah. It's all worthless. <clears throat> like Paul said, everything I did according to the law, you know, everything I did for God, I consider it all rubbish, you know, to just knowing Christ. So, it's all rubbish, but you can't hinge on your good works to say that you don't have a demon or that you haven't sinned. We've all sinned and sin is an open door to demons and we'll get there in a sec. But Isaiah 61, one in prophesying about the Messiah, uh, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me. It's talking about Jesus. Remember Jesus went in the synagogue and said, you know, this has been fulfilled today by him. Um, because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, right? So Jesus, one of his jobs when he came was to proclaim freedom to the captives. Freedom from demons, I believe, is what he's talking about here. And release from darkness for the prisoners. I believe that's all kind of talking about that spiritual demonic thing and think about what it what was jesus ministry one third was preaching the gospel one third was casting out demons one third was healing and we see that right here good news to the poor that's <coughs> the gospel that you can be saved from your sin bind up the brokenhearted that's also the gospel and then proclaim freedom for the captives and release of from darkness for the prisoners that's deliverance and healing <coughs> we'll see they go together as well in a little bit And then Matthew 9, 12 through 13, I think this is where as Christians, we need to humble ourselves and just ask God, God, do I have any demons that I need to get rid of? Remember, it's not a shameful thing to be like, oh, I had a demon. I mean, you guys have heard my testimony. I've had many demons cast out of me uh, in the name of Jesus, just like we see them in the Bible. They've come out with coughs and shrieks and things like that. Um, And I've bore the fruit. My life has changed. My life is better. I'm closer to God. I don't struggle with the things I used to struggle with because these things were demonic. see the church we're so quick to blame everything on the flesh um in a lot of places because we don't uh want to talk about demons and we don't believe in demons but jesus when people would come up to him he didn't always just say hey crucify your flesh more he was like yeah you need deliverance cast the demon out and they got better and they stopped so a lot of our issues we wrestle with are demons and the church is trying to tell us that they're physical or that you know we need to pray more which is not wrong. We do need to pray more. Yes, we do need to work more hard in the in the flesh. But if there is a demon, you can't overcome a spiritual thing with 
uh, fleshly, <clears throat> worldly um, methods. So Matthew 9, 12 through 13. Um, Jesus, uh, on hearing this, Jesus said, and I'm sorry, I'm taking this out of context, but I just wanted to read what Jesus said because it does stand true no matter what. It is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now, the play that he's making here is that everyone's a sinner in this case. But he's saying, listen, if you don't think you need a doctor, okay, well, I came for the sick, the people who realize they need a savior. <clears throat> and that's why I would check your heart on, can Christians have a demon? Like, before you go casting out a demons of other people, ask ask yourself about your own. Or ask, ask God about your own self, you know? God, do I have, do I have spirits? Look at your life. And, and I'm going to tell you at the end of this uh, episode on how, how do we know if there's a demon um, tormenting us or messing with us in our life or stopping us from having free will. <clears throat> but again, don't be the Pharisee who says, oh no, I'm righteous. I've lived a good life. I went to church my life. I don't have demons. That's what the Pharisee said. Jesus said, I came for um, the sick. Listen, Jesus wants people that come to his throne and say, I don't care. Call it a demon. Call it a, call it an evil spirit. Call it a, call it Satan. I just want this out. I don't, I don't, I don't want to have this struggle. I don't want to have this keeping me away from God. So don't let pride stop you from deliverance because you don't like the idea of saying that you have a demon or you don't, you know, you think your life's been too good for you to have a demon. So <clears throat> really important. So let's go to, man, I can't wait to do some sermons again where we just like pick one or two passages and we go through them. But man, lately we've been trying to cover these like big topics. <laughs> We're doing good. We're doing good though. I believe. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, the last thing I have about the Christians can have demons, um, thing, <clears throat> uh, is, you know, Jesus cast out demons in the synagogue, Mark 1, 21 through 27 and verse 39. I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but um, you know, it just says that Jesus went into the synagogue, began to teach. And then what happened? An impure spirit cried out. What do you want with us? Jesus of Nazareth. Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are. This holy one, son of us, one of God. <clears throat> Jesus sternly said, come out of him. The impure spirit shook the man violently and came out with him, out of him with a shriek. Okay. And then later it says, so he traveled through Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and what? Driving out demons. Okay. These were religious people. They knew God. They had demons, okay? So let's not look at ourselves as righteous and perfect. Like these guys were in the synagogue that Jesus was driving out demons. I think you'll find that demons are a lot more common than you might think, Uh, especially because, you know, one of the most important verses, I didn't even put it in my notes here, but in Ephesians, you know where it says, we do not fight against flesh and blood. It doesn't say we don't sometimes fight against, no, no. We do not fight against flesh and blood, like general, but we fight against, you know, evil spirits, um, uh, principalities in high places and all these things. Um, We are fighting a spiritual battle. So to think that, you know, little old me doesn't have a demon because, you know, I grew up in church and I've been a good kid. Nonsense. You know, we fight a spiritual battle. The devil's looking to get in in any way he can. And he doesn't care if you have the Holy Spirit. He cares if you're living righteous. Like, think about it. God didn't care um, if the Jewish people were his people or not when he had punished them. He cared if they were living in sin or not. When they were living in sin, he punished them and they were banished. When they were not living in sin, he dwelt among them. So you might have the Holy Spirit. That's great. But if you have sin in your life, then that is an open gateway to demons. And I can secure you that you do have a demon. Um, and again, some of you might be like, well, I don't have any sin, but I'm talking about even uh, evil thoughts, things like that, um, dark dreams, things like that. We'll get more into that. But anyways, it's really cool actually when you look at deliverance and you take your religious glasses off and you see how powerful this can be and that it can help 
so many people. I mean, you look at a guy like Isaiah Saldivar, the reason he's blowing up on YouTube is because him talking about deliverance, um, amongst other things, has lit an entire generation of young people on fire because they're like, they see something real coming out of Jesus. And they haven't seen that for a long time. And people are actually getting free of their their addictions where in the church they told them, oh, you have lust, go get married. You're going to suffer with that your whole life. You know, now they're getting delivered from it. <clears throat> Powerful. I'm going to grab some water and we're going to go into the next section. <laughs> Write a little note right here. <clears throat> Man, we're going to get through this with my throat. Sorry, you guys. Okay. <clears throat> Second common question we get. Do demons need to be cast out? Well, like I said, why did Jesus do deliverance if he could just convert people to faith? Yes, they must be cast out. Why did he say that these signs will follow all who believe? They will cast out demons. That's after he said, preach the gospel, go baptizing them. Whoever is baptized, whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. So why didn't he just leave it at that? If when you get baptized and you get, and you believe and you get saved that all the demons just leave. But then he still says, go cast out demons. And we know you shouldn't cast demons out of a non-believer. So, uh, it seems pretty clear that a Christian born again can, will, does have demons <clears throat> and we are to cast them out. And again, Acts eight, uh, four through eight, like we just read, they came out with shrieks. Um, people have asked me before, do I have to manifest to get delivered? <sighs> I'm like, and, and also sorry for anyone who's new manifest means the shrieking, the shaking, like when you read about the Bible, when people got delivered, they fell on the floor, they cried out, they, there were shrieks, um, they screamed, they cried, whatever. Um, sometimes it doesn't say that anything happened, although I think it's just because they didn't write every single detail, but <clears throat> point being is that this is how demons leave, and in my um, humble opinion of doing deliverance for four years, um, they always leave. Uh, with some sort of manifestation. The demon, it manifests itself through the human body um, before it comes out. <coughs> that sounds creepy, but that's just how it is. Um, and so yes, do demons need to manifest? I, I believe <coughs> they do. And I think people who ask that, they're prideful because they don't, um, they don't want to be that weird guy, you know, rolling on the floor. And if you're not willing to, to be that weird guy and to put yourself out there and to allow a demon to manifest, then you're not ready for deliverance because deliverance is so that you can get closer to God and be more who you, who God has planned you to be. So who cares what it looks like? If you fall on the ground, great. I mean, I got delivered the other day and I fell on the ground myself. <clears throat> These things happen and they're biblical. It's not like it goes against the Bible to not manifest is, is kind of to go against the Bible. And in our experience, I've never really seen a demon leave when people don't manifest or, I mean, it can be something small like crying or coughing. That's very common, but no manifestation at all. Very rare. Uh, if any case that people are getting delivered. So, um, <clears throat> It's kind of funny. Everything I wrote in the do demons seem to be cast out. I kind of already answered in the can Christians have demons. So that's good. Um, something to note though, for you guys. So if you want to do deliverance or whatever, uh, one of the simplest keys is that demons feed on our sin. So we need to know that demons come in through sin. This is why Jesus did not have any demons. You don't just get a demon from sitting around. You have to sin. And I think people get confused on this because if we all just understood the baseline of, yeah, sin brings in demons, then we would all know that, well, we probably all have demons because we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But it's like we read these stories in the Bible like they're um, random or very specific um, occasions that took place. But it's like, well, how do you think the demon got in? Like, like some of these people in the Bible, they're kids. I had demons. Like, how do you think the demon just got in a kid? 
but you are 50 year old. Don't think you're worthy of, you know, deliverance. Oh no, brother. I'm, I don't have any demons, you know, like demons come in through sin. That's the bottom line. <clears throat> and, um, yeah. So let's go down to healing and deliverance because they actually come in an end, you know, again, for the people who say, well, I don't have a demon because, you know, I'm perfect. Uh, but no, I'm just kidding. But let's go to Luke 13, 10 through 13. Um, on the Sabbath, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit, important, for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. This is awesome. So <laughs> even Pentecostals and most people that believe in like healing, if someone came into their church, bent over and said, yeah, <clears throat> I'm crippled and I haven't been able to move for 18 years. I haven't been able to stand up straight. <clears throat> I would bet that no, no one would ever say, well, maybe it's a demon. <laughs> and if someone said that, they'd be like, how dare you say that? Like this woman's just suffering with, you know, something physical. She didn't do anything wrong. But it's like, again, we always take demons as like this evil thing. Like, oh, you have a demon? Oh my gosh, no. How could she have a demon? She's just crippled. Poor her. But one, in this story, a few takeaways. This woman, one, doesn't say, I don't have a spirit. Two, Jesus doesn't say, hey, it's not a demon. He just commands the spirit of infirmity to go. He puts his hands on her. She straightens up. She praises God. <clears throat> Demons can cause sickness. Demons can cause physical pain. This is not the only example in the Bible. We see them going hand in hand throughout the Bible. Jesus casts out a demon. Person gets healed. Uh, Mark 9, 17 through 29. <laughs> a man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is demonized by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Now, this is what I said, like demons were common back then. Not that they're not common now, wink, wink, but um, people knew that they were around. See, the biggest thing that the devil has done is he's bamboozled us all to think that demons are rare, rare, rare they don't really exist, and they're not common at all. <clears throat> but, this guy comes to Jesus and is like, yo, you know, my son has a demon and it's robbed him of his speech. Jesus didn't just say, well, that's not a demon, sir. Just because he can't talk doesn't mean he has a demon. No, he says, when he talks about, you know, whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, comes rigid. Um, there's a whole thing here. But uh, so they brought the, the boy before him, verse 20. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. <clears throat> Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything to take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. For one who believes, okay. That's good. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the crowd was running to a scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. And what did he do? He named it. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Okay, again. <laughs> the spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead, but Jesus took him by the hand lifted him feet and stood up. <clears throat> so again, this was a physical thing. He, he was robbed of his speech. Uh, like he says, he calls it a deaf and dumb spirit. And he cast out a demon that was causing him to not be able to speak. Most Christians would just say, oh, he needs physical healing. Oh, he should go see a doctor. Oh, he's just shy. <laughs> Jesus is like, no, 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 this is a demon. Let me, let me grab this guy. <clears throat> So healing and deliverance, those are just a few cases, but read through your gospels looking for it. And I'm telling you, Jesus many times cast out demons and people got healed. Very important. So now we get to kind of the, the bread of 
what we're or the meat of what we're trying to go at. So I've answered some of those questions again. I know probably to some of these listeners, listeners, they seem basic, but um, especially for you that have maybe never received deliverance, you should really pray about these things because not to scare you, I've never met a single person who didn't have demons uh, that we've ministered to. And we've ministered to seven year old kids before. So, you know, don't take my experience for it, but I see that we, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but uh, we fight against demons <clears throat> and they're trying to destroy our lives. And I've had demons cast out of me. It's common. And, um, everyone in the Bible times didn't act surprised. It was common. <laughs> so how to do deliverance. Now, again, I, I've made this podcast also as a way for, if you, um, are a minister, you're trying to <clears throat> share with someone why Christians can have demons, just send them to this podcast, answer some of those basic questions about deliverance. What is it? Uh, how to do it? <clears throat> so let's go to how to do deliverance. So again, Mark 16, right? We, they will cast out demons, those who believe. So do you believe? Are you a believer of Christ? Are you a follower of Jesus? Yes, yes. Okay. Then you should be casting out demons. This is not optional. <clears throat> First John 2, 6 says, you know, uh, we should be walking as Jesus walked. Okay. So what did Jesus do? Preach the gospel, heal the sick, he cast out demons. Now, I think a lot of people, they don't like casting out demons because it's messy. Healing is this beautiful, pretty thing. Oh my gosh, you know, they got healed and preaching the gospel is this amazing thing because we get to use our literacy and, and um, visuals and things. And deliverance is just messy and they're screaming and it's loud and people are falling on the ground. Like it just said in that last passage, they're foaming at the mouth. Like churches don't want that. Why? Because we're scared of scaring people away. So how have we covered it up. We've said, oh, well, these things don't exist anymore. Oh, deliverance. Oh, all the demons are in Africa, you know. Uh, <clears throat> you know, they're not bi-coastal. <laughs> um, they took a cruise down there and they really liked, you know, uh, the temps down there. So they decided to just all chill out down there. No, um, there's plenty of demons in the world. There um, has many demons in America and in Americans as there are in Africa. Um yeah. So <clears throat> one, how to do deliverance. Well, one, don't be religious about it because that's what that other video I made was about. Um, the unity and deliverance. I think that was episode six of the podcast of this season. Um, the Bible doesn't put a cap on the amount of demons people have. So don't let people say, Oh, you can't do that. Oh, that's not a demon. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Mary Magdalene mentions that she had seven spirits cast out. Legion in Mark five was, 2,000 spirits, at least, you know, there were 2,000 pigs, but it could have been more than that. So don't get technical, don't get legalistic, just stick to following the Holy Spirit, uh, bottom line. <clears throat> and then secondly, okay, how do you do deliverance? Call out spirits by their function. So what did we see Jesus do, right? He sees the woman crippled. He commands a spirit of infirmity to leave. Um, 2 Timothy 1.7 right? He says, God did not give you what? A spirit of fear. So he's calling out different spirits by uh, their symptom or um, <clears throat> by their function or what, what they have done to wreak havoc in this person, right? The deaf and dumb spirit. Okay, this guy can't talk. They used to call that dumb back in the day. Um, so deaf and dumb spirit leave. Like it really is that simple at the, 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 bottom line core of deliverance. Now there is some intricacies and that's why, like I'm going to talk about more later is you, we really need to follow the Holy spirit in everything we do, whether it's healing, deliverance, preaching the gospel. There is not a cookie cutter way to heal people. There's not a cookie cutter way to share the gospel. And there's definitely not a cookie cutter way to cast out demons. The point is to do it in Jesus name and to do the things that I'm listing right here. <laughs> Get, let me get a little sip of water. So, <clears throat> Mark 5, <clears throat> another example of this. Just read it. Um, they went across the lake <clears throat> to the region of the garrison. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an impure spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in the tombs and no one can bind him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, 
but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons off his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the... See, that's what I was trying to say. He had the self-control to run and and present himself to Jesus. But then the demon starts manifesting, verse 7. <clears throat> he shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? In God's name, don't torture me. For Jesus has said, had said to him, Come out of this man, you impure spirit. So this is interesting. And I, I talked about this in my last deliverance video, but just in case you missed it. For Jesus has said to him, come out of this man, you impure spirit. So we know that the demon did not leave the first time that Jesus commanded the demon to leave. So that's a very important note because many people will say, well, why do you have to keep yelling at the demon? It should just leave at Jesus' name immediately. Well, for one, I'm not Jesus. And two, even Jesus commanded this demon to leave and it did not leave immediately. So then it says, then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, my name is Legion for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again, not to send him out of the area. So they had like a full on conversation here. He's begging him again and again. He's asking God again, 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 like, don't, don't send me out of the area. <clears throat> so there was a large herd of pigs feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the impure spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. So, point being here is, for one, demons don't always listen the first time we command them to leave. So that's why we have to continue to command them to go. But what did Jesus do when the demon wouldn't leave? He... he um, he, uh, he encountered the enemy head on and he asked, you know, what is your name? And he said, my name is Legion. <clears throat> so one, it's okay to ask the demons, what is your name? What is your identity? Two, if Jesus did it, we know that it's important because the demon didn't leave until Jesus got the demon's name. And also people always say, well, there's no such demons outside of, you know, function like lust, um, Anger, you know, functions, meaning like uh, not named like a common, uh, like a common noun or what's the word? I'm not a good English person, but, you know, like there's no demon named Taylor. It's just uh, demons that describe certain actions and struggles. But if Jesus called this one Legion, then there definitely are names. So point is, is we need to identify the spirit. So either go at it by function um, ask the demon what its name is, if it's manifesting and it will not go or C, which is my favorite is if you can't figure out why the demon will not go, let's say, uh, you have a guy, he comes to you, Hey, I'm struggling with pornography and you command lust to leave him and the spirit is not leaving. Lust is not going. And you're like, what is going on? Um, you ask the demon, what is your name? No response. Best thing to do is to pray and to ask the Holy spirit to reveal what is the name of the spirit so that this man can get free? Or, Holy Spirit, why is this demon not leaving? Um, <clears throat> now, I should have put this before, but before you do any of the uh, top things, meaning before you start casting the demons out, you need to have the person repent. So, if someone comes to you and says, I'm really struggling with lust. Okay, well, you need to turn away from pornography and not do it anymore. Um, that doesn't mean you need to send them off for a week and have them prove their repentance, although John the Baptist would have had them do that. The point is, is they need to make a... <coughs> they need to make a um, uh, a promise to God that, okay, I'm not going to uh, look at pornography anymore. I'm closing that door. I'm done with that. <coughs> and that's very important. So you have the person repent first, turning away. If they're not turning away from the sin, if they are indulging in it, so like let's say um, you want to cast out a spirit of lust uh, or adultery from a guy who's you know living with his girlfriend or let's say uh, fornication, but he's living with his girlfriend. Fornication will not leave because fornication is saying, well, my legal right is that he is still living with his girlfriend. The sin that got me into this person's body in the first place 
that person is still indulging in. So why should I, demon, have to leave if um, if that person is still indulging in said sin? So the person must repent before you cast out any demons or demons will not leave 100% <clears throat> of the time. And the second thing for you is, as the person doing deliverance, is you need to close your personal doors to sin and come with faith, right? Um, you know, in that story that we talked about, about uh, the deaf and dumb guy, later the disciples are like, why couldn't we cast the demon out? And he's like, because you have so little faith. Truly, I tell you, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, you know, move from here to there and it will move. So you need to come in repentant, turning away from sin. You don't want to have an open door to the enemy trying to cast out the enemy. Um, and you need to come with faith of saying, I believe that Jesus's name will cast out demons. I believe that this is a demon um, and stand on God. If you do not stand on your authority in Christ, the demons will trample all over you. And there's a great story about that. It's uh, in uh, Acts nineteen eleven through 12, which I actually had later on in my, here it is. So um, <clears throat> very interesting that uh, it says, let's go to Acts 19, verse 13. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day, the evil spirit answered them, <coughs> Jesus I know, and Paul I know about, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. <clears throat> so, again, this is an extreme case and I have not seen this personally, but I believe it 100% because if you don't come with the authority that God has given you um, by his name to cast out demons, I'm not going around saying, in the name of Jesus who Paul preaches, you know, no, in the name of Jesus, my God. I'm, I don't have a connection through to God through Paul or through the apostles or you don't say, you know, uh, in the name of Jesus whom Taylor preaches. No, you, you say in the name of Jesus, my God. So you need to come um, <clears throat> with your authority. And also, if you don't have authority and also if you're not following Jesus, this is what will happen. The demons will jump on you, pound you to the ground and, and overpower you. And we have seen it. I... Uh, I've seen multiple times now where a person has got human, superhuman strength trying to cast out a demon. I am no joke. We've had four grown adults, um, grown men, trying to hold this person down because they're trying to hurt them. The demon's trying to hurt the person getting delivered and also um, potentially trying to hurt us who are doing the deliverance. Now, this is rare. Again, we've delivered probably close to 200 people, but... This has only happened a handful of times, only three in my mind that I can remember. I'm sure it's been a few more times than that, but um, it is real. And if you do not know your authority, if you do uh, not know the faith you uh, uh, profess, and if you are living in sin, uh, you will be like the sons of Sceva and you will, will be left in the house naked and bleeding. So um, there's a balance between you want to go into deliverance and and in the ministry of doing deliverance with wisdom and um, uh, a holy fear of just the whole situation that, yeah, demons do have power, but knowing overall that Jesus' name is higher than every name and that you are anointed by God, you are a son of God, you are born again to go and to cast out demons. So don't let it hold you back thinking, oh, well, I'm not perfect. I haven't done everything right. I mean, none of us have. So then what do you do? So you've you've... You've made sure you're clean going in. You're making sure the person is repenting, which means is turning away from their sin. And generally speaking, you know, it would be good also to know that they've been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit. And if they haven't, you know, to do those things because those are also powerful ways to keep sin out of your life and therefore demons out of your life. <clears throat> but once you've done those things, you identify the Spirit, by the way I said, call them out by function, um, ask the demon its name and or 
pray and ask the Holy Spirit. And then what do you do? You cast it out. And the way you cast it out, literally in the simplest form is in the name of Jesus, I command you spirit of blank, you know, lust, anger, whatever the person is dealing with, come out right now in Jesus name, come out, leave, leave, leave in Jesus name, leave, go, 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 go. I mean, that's literally what we do. Like we say the same things over and over again. Sometimes we recite Bible verses, things like that. But, um, you know, in general, these demons are stubborn and, it's Jesus' name that cast them out. So we just continue to say in Jesus' name, go in Jesus' name, go. And, you know, within five to 15 minutes, people get delivered from a uh, spirit or two. So it's awesome. Um, where am I? Yeah. Um, and also just know that I think this is what scares people from doing deliverance is you're going to make uh, mistakes, you know, like, like when, um, uh, John comes to Jesus and says, you know, we saw someone driving out demons in your name. We tried to stop him because he is not one of us. And Jesus is like, yo, do not stop him uh, for whoever is not against you is for you. Listen, there's going to be people who do deliverance differently. They're going to say, you're not doing that right. You're not doing this right. Blah, blah, blah. Trust me, we've had it too. But if you are casting out demons in my name, you are not against God. You are for God. And people are getting freedom in the name of Jesus. And that's why I'm laying out these simple forms of deliverance. Yes, there's many things that the Holy Spirit has shown us personally that I talked about in the unity and deliverance video and he, uh, podcast, and he showed many other people's the same thing. But the most important thing is to keep it simple, knowing that this is what Jesus did. This is how he did it. And we have the power to do it. And it's okay to make mistakes. It's okay. Uh, if the person doesn't fully get free, you need to walk out in what God has called all who believe to do. <laughs> So don't let people take away your witness because, you know, you didn't read every deliverance book. Like, who cares? I've never even read a single deliverance book. And don't get me wrong, some people in my family have, and I think we've learned some stuff from it. But um, it is not necessary <clears throat> to cast out demons. You know, Jesus, when he sent the 12 out, he didn't give them like a, you know, master class. He just was like, hey, I've given you power to cast out demons, preach the gospel, heal the sick. Okay, see you in a bit. You know, like... <laughs> We in America, we cloud things up way too much with knowledge. And that's why in Africa, you do see healing. You do see demons because I'm not saying they're stupid. They're actually very smart people. I'm saying we, they don't have these big theological seminaries. They don't have um, all this nonsense about uh, science and all this uh, deep phil philosophy and all these things. And that's what we do with deliverance. We make a philosophy out of it. We make a doctrine out of it. Instead of just saying, hey, Jesus cast out demons and it helped people. Okay, let's cast out demons so we can help people. <laughs> Got to keep it simple. Is it, can it be um, intricate and hard and, and different? Yes, but keep it simple. Repentance, Jesus name, cast it out. Uh, that has never changed for our ministry. <clears throat> now, this should seem obvious by now, but big question is, okay, how do I know if I have a demon? If you really want to know, ask yourself these questions. One, identify any symptoms right in your life. So um, how can I give you an example? Okay, so I'll give you a simple one because I know if I talk about lust, people are like, well, yeah, but I don't have lust anymore. You know, um, <laughs> especially you righteous people listening to this. No, I'm kidding. But um, you know, I used to pick my skin around my fingernails all the time. I know that sounds gross, but something about it was just like, it felt like a great habit. And everyone was always like, Hey, maybe, maybe that's something. And I was like, why? Well, there's nothing sinful about it. Um, but later on I did realize, I mean, this was like 10 years of doing this. I mean, I haven't seen my thumb healed in years. It's always been like a, like an open wound. I mean, I would literally just pull all the skin back. It was very gross. Um, <clears throat> and I started thinking, you know, this isn't good. I don't, I don't want to be doing this because this is the body that God has given me. And I got convicted about that. Like, and also like my wife and things like that. I don't want my hand to look like that. Um, and so, you know, I thought maybe this has to do with anxiety because I just can't not do it. Like I knew there was something to it, maybe being demonic. And I know that sounds crazy. Like what picking your, your nails or picking your skin. But the reason I knew something about it was demonic is because I couldn't control it. I would look down and all of a sudden I was picking my finger and I was like, whoa, when did I do that? When did I start that? I was like, I wasn't even consciously doing it. It was just happening. Um, and that goes into my second question, you know, do I have self-control over it? But 
Anyways, I started thinking, okay, maybe it's a spirit of anxiety. <clears throat> and um, I got the spirit of anxiety cast out. We did it how we said. I repented of it. I said, I'm sorry, God, that I'm anxious. I don't want to be anxious. I trust you. Um, help me to just trust you more. So because anxiety comes out of not trusting God, uh, fear, you know. And um, yeah, Lord set me free. They commanded anxiety to go. I started, I felt something in my stomach. I started coughing. Uh, haven't picked my fingers really at all. There's been a few times it's very dry where we live. So sometimes skin will peel up. So I'll just like get rid of it. But that thumb that I told you that I haven't been able to see in like 10 years, I literally used to look at it and be like, I'll never see that thing healed. It's completely healed. And one side is like, looks brand new with no wrinkles because it's literally been, you know, destroyed for so long. But anyways, that was demonic. We have no idea the things that are demonic in our life. Um, we have no idea the amount of freedom we could have from some of the trivial, triv some of the most trivial things. I mean, I was deathly allergic to cats, deathly allergic to horses. We cast a demon of infirmity. I don't want to make that clear. Everyone listening, God, people always repeat my story. And they're like, yeah, Jesus healed you of that. I'm like, yeah, no, but you're not hearing me. Jesus cast a demon out. I I got a demon cast out. I did it the same way. They commanded spirit of infirmity leave. Now, I had asthma my whole life. So we knew there was a spirit of infirmity there because not only had it caused the, the um, allergies, but <coughs> as I cough, um, but it had caused asthma in my life and asthma had also tried to kill me twice in my life. So I knew that, uh, that was of the enemy as well because God did not design me to have that. <clears throat> and as we know, healing and deliverance goes hand in hand sometimes in the Bible. <clears throat> so we cast a spirit of infirmity out. Well, guess what? Don't have asthma. I just got sick and my coughs were like so low key. Uh, when I used to get sick, I would my cough would turn into the worst part about the sickness because the asthma would kick in and it would make my breathing really bad. And I'd have to get on albuterol and everything. And now like this sickness i was totally fine breathing fine um <clears throat> and i'm completely the day before i was super allergic to cats the day after i get the demon cast out i am holding cats loving cats touching horses riding horses we have a horse at our house um it's supernatural you can be free of that stop saying oh this is just physical oh, i gotta just take my meds uh my meds my meds you know, you put so much trust in meds, but you, but you, you know, you'll doubt me all day that it's a demon. <clears throat> it's like, okay, well keep putting your, you know, money into, um, <laughs> pharmacia, I guess, you know, again, I'm not making fun of any of you guys. I was in the same place, but it just bothers me when you have the answer, when it's like, this is it, you can be free of this. Um, but they would rather trust in the things of this world over the things of God. So anyways, long tangent, but I was talking about, uh, identify the symptoms. <clears throat> Secondly, how do you identify symptoms? Do I have self-control? Well, self-control of what? Your mind, your will, and emotions. Okay, these are all things that happen in your soul. Now, we didn't talk about this, but I personally believe that demons are in your soul realm. They're not in your spirit realm. So people are always like, how could I have a demon? I have the Holy Spirit. Well, the Holy Spirit is in your spirit. And... Your soul, however, is your mind, your will, and emotion. So many people who have demons, they'll say, yeah, I have these really perverted thoughts or I just have these thoughts, oh man, I want to kill someone or, or, um, or, you know, I really didn't want to look at pornography, but then I just fell into it. Okay. It's messing with their mind, their will, and their emotions, right? Like their anger, that's an emotion. And then all of a sudden it turns into like rage and violence it's messing with that. Their will. I didn't want to look at pornography, but I did. Their mind, right? <clears throat> uh, these perverted thoughts going on in their head or these thoughts of suicide, right? This is where demons hang out. They're in your soul. And that's why Paul said, you know, make sure you keep your uh, uh, <clears throat> body, soul, and spirit blameless for the coming day of our Lord. Like every part of you must be blameless, you know? It's kind of like saying, you know, for people who say, well, I can't have a demon because, you know, I have the Holy Spirit. Okay, well, 
So are you saying then, well, I have the Holy Spirit, so my flesh can indulge in anything it wants, um, but that doesn't make me sinful because I have the Holy Spirit. No one would ever say that. Okay, so then what's the difference? Like, if your flesh can make you sinful, even if you have the Holy Spirit, then your soul can also make you sinful with demons. And that's what demons do. They lie. <clears throat> they are lying spirits. So why do they want to go in your soul? Because they come in through your flesh, through your actions, what you look at, what you say, what you see, what you do, sin. And they come into your soul and they mess with your mind. They tell you, oh, you should do this. Oh, you know, and then, you know, the perverted thoughts. Like I've had people that couldn't pick up their baby, their own child, because they got perverted thoughts about these their kid because of their past life of living in sexual sin and the demons that had accompanied them because of those sins. Um, so this is what they do. So do you have self-control even when it comes down to your mind? You know, you might have overcome lust for like a while, like I have, um, but your mind might still be tarnished with these images that uh, suddenly will pop up or you'll have these demonic dreams of women trying to have sex with you or men trying to have sex with you or something like that. Th these are demons. <clears throat> um, and I know that from firsthand experience. I had a spirit of fantasy because in my past, life of sin, I would fantasize about, you know, sexual things, you know, uh, when pornography wasn't around. Um, and now obviously I've been set free from that for three years, have not done any of that garbage, but once in a while I would be, um, you know, sitting down, laying in bed and all of a sudden all these like images would come to my head and I couldn't get them out. And I was like rebuking them, telling them to leave and they won't leave. They won't leave. They won't leave. Well, I have self-control. Those thoughts, this is my mind, my brain. If I'm telling you to leave, you should leave. That's my, 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 my head. And that's when I realized this is a demon and it is plaguing my mind um, and not allowing me to have control over my mind. <coughs> very important. This is very nuanced. You have to look at this. Biggest way to know if you have a demon. Do you have open doors? If you, are, if you have any sin in your life, then... 100% you have a demon. And, and again, I would argue if you've had sin in your past life, then the demons probably aren't manifesting in the way you think. Like you're not addicted to porn. But like I said, the fantasy things are showing up. You still get perverted thoughts when you see certain things and you can't shake that. <clears throat> Bottom line is, this is my last note. Everyone has demons. So just get over it. Um, that's our experience helping people. Uh, there's no... Thing in the Bible that says, you know, only these certain people can have demons and are susceptible. Um, we've cast out demons of everyone and it's not just because we like to do it. We don't like doing deliverance. Sometimes it's not always the most fun thing because of, like I said, it's messy and it's hard, but we love when people get free and they come back and they say, Taylor, my mind is so clear from the lustful thoughts. Taylor, um, I feel, you know, w so much more confident in myself. Um, Taylor, I'm not feeling violent anymore. I, I don't feel, um, unfor uh, I don't feel unforgiveness towards this person anymore. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. <clears throat> so that's, that's how you identify to know if you have a demon or if someone else has a demon. And I think if you humble yourself, we would all realize that we do have demons. And, uh, speaking of, you know, if you do have demons and you're like, okay, well, what do I do? I, I need deliverance from these things or, and here's the thing, don't be afraid to say maybe it's a demon. Okay. We always want to make these absolutes. If there's even an inkling that, huh, I do have this one issue. I wonder if that could leave with a demon. Have someone pray for you. Email us at hello at Jesus is <laughs> um, But literally reach out to me. I will literally get on a FaceTime call and I will help you out. Um, done it with many people. Kylie, who was on the podcast, that's how we uh, connected in the first place. Um, please do it. And I also know other people in certain areas that I can get you in contact with. Um, there is no hurt. Um, Jesus, I'm sure, is in heaven weeping because he wants his people to um, experience everything he gave for them, right? We experience healing. Listen, you don't, you don't say as a Christian, well, I'm already a Christian, so I don't need to be healed anymore. I mean, who has said that? No one. We're all still looking for healing, but why is it I'm already a Christian, I don't, I don't have demons? Jesus preached the gospel, healed the sick, cast out demons. We all need the gospel. We all need healing. We all need deliverance. It, can it be any more simple than that? We need all three things. <clears throat> so again, get in contact with me. 
Closing thoughts. Uh, I want to go back to the Acts uh, 19, uh, one about the sons of Sceva. I think it's really cool. Um, starting at verse 11, Acts 19. God did extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs and aprons that he had touched him were taken to the sick and their illness were cured and evil spirits left them. Now, why did this work? It's not because Paul necessarily touched them, but those people took them to the sick. They had so much faith, just like when that woman touched Jesus, that, man, if we can just take something that Paul has touched, they will get cured. Um, Jesus, God, met them in their faith. Just like how I did that whole episode on faith. Faith is like a magnet. It attracts God when he sees our faith. When we put faith even in weird things like this whole handkerchief thing, he's like, okay, I'm going to honor that faith because, wow, that's a lot of faith. <coughs> so that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then it talks about the sons of Sceva part. I'll skip over that. <clears throat> uh, so, you know, I'll, I'll finish it, you know, with the sons of Sceva, it, well, like we already read. Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. When this became known to the Jews <clears throat> and Greeks leave, living in Ephesus, so when the whole Sons of Sceva thing came up, that this guy this guy with the demon had overpowered all these eight dudes, um, when this got out, when word got out, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord was held in high honor. Many of those who believed now came and openly confessed what they had done. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together, burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, in, the, in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. So a drachma was a silver coin worth about a day's wages. 50,000 drachmas, that's 50,000 days wages. So what does deliverance do? It puts the fear of God in people. And I'll say that is totally true. When you realize you can have a demon and still be a Christian, oh man, that gives you a healthy fear of God to say, sin is really something I need to steer clear of. <clears throat> sin is really something that uh, takes me away from knowing God. I mean, and and again, remember how I said that demons come in through sin. Why do I? Why do we know this? Not only because it's obvious throughout all scripture, but I think this is just another great verse here. Um, when they saw that this happened, many came who had believed and confessed what they had done, like confessed sin, and they burned their sorcery and all that stuff. Why did they do that? Because they knew, wow, my sin could be an open door to these demons. Okay, I need to get rid of all this stuff. Demons are no joke. See, they saw demons and they realized, uh-oh, I probably have that too. I need to, I need to get rid of my sin. I don't want to be like that. You see why it is so beneficial? And in this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. So deliverance is a huge way to share the gospel. That's why Jesus did it. It was a sign. It's not only to get people free, it was a sign. So this is how demons come in, through sin. And and we should be very afraid and we should be in a healthy fear. Um, and we should, and it, what am I saying? And it should put the fear of God in us. And again, 50,000 drachmas, that's 50,000 days wages of scrolls burned. Why? Because they considered following Jesus and being righteous more important than any monetary thing, any cool thing that they owned. And that's something that we all need to hear <clears throat> in today's church. Like some people who we've helped with deliverance, we've been like, oh, you have some, you know, maybe witchcraft stuff in your house that they don't realize is witchcraft. I'm not saying like, something obvious. Maybe it's like a dream catcher or something like that. We're like, yo, you need to go get rid of that. Like that's, that's an, of another God. Or, or when we tell people, Hey, you know, yoga, that's actually Hindu religion that a Christian should not be doing yoga. I don't care if it's called holy yoga. And if that surprises you look into it. I mean, it, it's like separating baptism from Christ, from uh, Christendom. Like yoga is a Hindu practice. It's only become Americanized in the last like 20 years. Uh, my parents' generation always knew, oh yeah, yoga, that's no good. Um, but anyways, when we, you ask people, hey, you need to stop doing these things um, because those are open doors to demons. You're like, oh no, no, I couldn't give that up. Oh no, that cost you much money. Oh this, oh that. These people threw away their scrolls because they knew that they were of the enemy and they were not pleasing to God and they could be open doors to demons. 
even though it routed them of 50,000 days of work of like, like if you get paid a hundred dollars a day, 50,000 times a hundred. I mean, I, I can't even put that together in my mind. So that's very important. <clears throat> now, again, this, this was the, the value of the scrolls of multiple people. But my point is, is you have to give things up and certain things we indulge in in life are of demons. And see, these people wanted to, you know, uh, what's the saying, have their cake and eat it too, or whatever, like whatever it is. <laughs> they wanted it both ways. And God's like, no, you, you either get rid of the things that are not of God and it is a sacrifice. Uh, or you don't get deliverance. You don't get to follow me. And so this shows what the key was to deliverance. It's really surrendering. It's confessing. Um, it's getting rid of things that are not pleasing to God and uh, searching your heart. I would encourage all of you, search your home. Ask God, God, is there anything in here that could be demonic that's not of you? I mean, hate to say this, but even like Harry Potter, <clears throat> like I said, dream catchers, um, things from... Uh, Oh, what's, what's the group? Uh, uh, the Freemasons, uh, yoga. I know this sounds crazy, but look into all these things. I'm telling you, they're all from the enemy. And because we've done deliverance, I I've learned how demons have come into people and they've came in through all those things that I've mentioned. Um, so it's not to be taken lightly. And obviously these people in Acts 19 did not take it lightly. So, uh, I think we've exhausted that point, but um, at the end of the day, uh, w when it comes to deliverance, this is kind of my, l these are my last thoughts here is that you really have to listen to the Holy Spirit. So take what the Bible says, what I've taught tonight, um, keeping it simple in that you teach the person to repent. You identify the spirit's name by its function. You command the spirit to go in the name of Jesus. And when the person feels a, I forgot to mention this, but when they feel a release, like the person will be coughing, coughing, crying, crying, whatever it is when they feel oh, like a, normally it'd be like a large breath or like a very big cough and they feel, okay, it's gone. Then it's gone. But you keep going until they feel that it's released or until the manifestation has uh, stopped. <clears throat> but at the end of the day, on top of all that, follow the Holy Spirit because you will have times where you'll, you'll get stuck and be like, why is this demon not leaving? It's manifesting. It's not going. Um, why is this person not getting free from his sexual... Uh, dreams, even though we've cast out lust and pornography and all these things, these are the times where you will have to seek God. And the person who is being delivered specifically will have to seek God and ask God, God, what is the spirit? What is its name that we're missing? You know, my buddy, he went through multiple times of deliverance and kept having these demonic dreams, sexual demonic dreams. And God kept showing him in dreams in godly dreams, what the demons were that were doing it. And then we would meet up, we'd cast those demons out and then God would show him more until those dreams started dying down. Um, and now most people say, well, that's not biblical. Uh, one, what part of that is not biblical Two, we have to follow the Holy spirit. Um, that is the whole point of the new covenant. Everything in acts was not in the Bible. It was them going by the experience of Jesus and the following of the Holy Spirit. So he is principal and it will always align with scripture. Uh, again, like I said in the, the other episode of Deliverance, if I go heal someone of cancer, no one's going to say that's unbiblical because no one got healed of cancer in the Bible. See, it's the same principle of healing just with healing of something new that is not in the Bible. So same with deliverance. The Bible never talks about a specific spirit of lust it talks about fear. It talks about deaf and dumb. It talks about infirmity. That does not mean there isn't something called a spirit of lust. It's <clears throat> That's why we have to follow the Holy Spirit. It's the same procedure. It's still deliverance. It's just a different name identifying what the person is struggling. We don't see anyone that comes to Jesus in the Bible that was struggling with lust. I'm sure there were plenty of people that were. Um, but it's important to note that. Um, and I don't believe that there's just... I don't believe that the demon's actual name is Mr. Lust. I believe that demons uh, manifest in our lives by the way we allow them to. So if I sin in the way of lust, I have opened a door. I have invited a spirit in that now will bug me and will continue to be in my head and being like, come on, Taylor, come on, look at porn, lust, 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 lust. And it'll start to shape my mind. I can't even see a woman now without her clothes off and things like that. Um, 
That is why we name the spirit lust. It's not that its name is actual lust. Who cares what its real name is? It's just a demon and you've allowed it to manifest in the way of lust in your life because that is the door you have opened. That is the sin you have given way to by your own desires, by your own flesh. And so that is where the demon will tempt you. And I'm telling you, that used to be me. I got the demon of lust cast out and pornography, masturbation, a few other things, perversion. Um, I don't have those thoughts now. I can look at a woman very purely. I don't have these dreams anymore. I don't even have fantasy uh, pictures in my mind anymore because those things all can supernaturally leave. <clears throat> uh, I want to leave you with this first. So Luke 10, Jesus sends out the disciples, right? He gives them permission to cast out demons and stuff. Super awesome um, scripture. But the 72 returned from that mission and said, Lord, you know, they, they had so much joy. Lord, even the demons submit to us in your name. And Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. See, that's where people get the Mark 16, snakes being demons. Um, nothing will harm you. And that's kind of what I was saying about the Mark 16. Like we are, we have dominion over everything. Nothing can harm us in Jesus' name. Jesus says though, however, do not rejoice that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. And <coughs> I don't forget the other verse that says, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We healed in your name. And Jesus says, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. <coughs> so that's super duper important um, to just keep in mind, I guess I should say, that deliverance is amazing. It's incredible. It is a part of our walk. It's something we do, but it is not our walk. It is not our ministry alone. There is no such thing as deliverance ministry. And I'm sorry, if you are a deliverance ministry, you are an error because we are to do the things that Jesus did. Preach the gospel, which is if you repent, if you're baptized, if you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you will be saved from your sin. You'll spend eternity with God. You can have a relationship with Jesus. <clears throat> heal the sick and to cast out demons. So casting out demons is hundred percent part of it, but it is one third of the ministry that Jesus has called all of us to do. So don't rejoice that the demons submit to you, you know, too much. That's really awesome. And like Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like, fall like lightning from heaven, but rejoice that our names are written in heaven, that, that we know Jesus. We never want, and I've seen this with a lot of people. We never want demons to become the main story of our, um, of our uh, ministry or of what we do for God. It's, it's awesome. And I will say, once you start doing it, you won't stop and people will, uh, it's a big eye catcher for people, um, bigger than healing, I would say. And uh, sometimes the gospel, but, um, my point is, is don't get caught up in deliverance and in the doctrines of deliverance and all these things do deliverance because Jesus commanded us to do it. Follow the Holy spirit in doing it. Don't give up, help people, help yourself. But, just keep everything in line that the gospel is number one. Don't be casting out demons of people that aren't surrendered to Jesus. Don't be casting out demons of people that don't want to follow Jesus. Don't be casting out demons of people that are not born again. Make sure they are born again. And rejoice that our names are written in heaven in the book of life. <clears throat> so... It's really good. And, and I just want to say from my personal experience, you know, just to open some of your guys' eyes, the things that I've seen deliverance from for other people and for my, some of these for myself, lust, fibromyalgia, uh, anxiety, you know, anxiety attacks. Those are demonic. That's a demon manifesting when you have an anxiety attack. Um, I don't mean that in any way. Like, oh my gosh, you're telling that poor little girl she has demons. I mean, yes, but no, it's like you could be free from that. It's okay, you know, but that is a demon manifesting. That's not normal. Uh, condemnation, meaning I used to get these condemning thoughts in my head. Um, like you'll never be good enough. You're not, you know, um, you know, Oh, you only read three chapters of the Bible today. How dare you, you should be reading four. And I realized that was just a spirit lying to me and I got it cast out. And now I've been able to experience the love of God more. So if you struggle with experiencing God's love, maybe because the way you were brought up, that might be because you have a spirit of condemnation that, that you feel that, if you do anything remotely wrong, that you have been condemned by God. Um, uh, I've seen people get delivered of fear. Uh, people, most people in life have fear. 
uh, big fears actually when you really uncover it. addiction and that's tons of different drugs tons of different you know alcohol things like that um, abuse uh, people who have been abused as child children they they carry um, uh, they carry that and the demon reminds them uh, their whole life that you've been abused and and uh, it, it it wreaks a lot of havoc in and in people's lives um a uh, shame and guilt. That's a big one. People who have shame and guilt, uh, for their past. Like if you're born again, you should have no shame. You should have no guilt because you are a born again, son of God made new. Uh, so we've seen shame and guilt cast out, um, anger, violence, you know, uh, a way to know that a de- an, uh, there's a demon of anger, right? Like God gets angry. Ang- anger is a human emotion, a human, uh, experience. But what happens is when you, lose track of your anger when you cannot control your anger any longer this is when it becomes demonic i mean maybe you've experienced or you've seen another people you know when you'll be so mad and then you'll throw something and you're like whoa why did i why did i just do that that was like that was weird like yeah that wasn't you yeah you're right that was a demon um, and that's when the demon starts to manifest to where you're out of control now and it turns into rage and violence We've seen a spirit of violence cast out people who just, when they get angry, they just get violent, you know? Um, This one's crazy, but it's been a recent one. Spirits stopping metabolism. So people who struggle to lose weight, they've done everything. They've tried, you know, every diet. Um, Why is it that some people just don't have a good metabolism? Like scientists will tell you, well, God didn't design it like that. So here's how we do it. We we try everything as a spirit first. Listen, if, if the person does not manifest a demon, then it is not a demon. But if they manifest a demon, then it's a demon. And if they bear fruit of that deliverance, meaning their life changes, then obviously. And so we've seen spirits stopping metabolism. And we got that, someone got that cast out and they've lost like 25 pounds by eating basically the same way that they had been eating before, uh, where they really struggled to lose any weight. Um, so really cool infirmity right like i talked about such as asthma allergies all these things the list could go on and on i mean hundreds of millions of things cancer um uh try you know if you have people in your life that have these like sicknesses like diabetes or fibromyalgia especially like all those autoimmune diseases autoimmune diseases 100 percent are demonic because they'll tell you oh we don't know where these come from that's a that's a numero uno okay yeah that's a demon um because there's no cause. I mean, if I fall and break my arm, you don't say, that's a demon. Like, no, I just broke my arm. I mean, maybe I need physical healing. But um, but for these people who just develop these autoimmune diseases out of nowhere, uh, we try to normalize them in life, but it's demonic. <clears throat> so anyways, this has been long as normal, but I'll leave you with this. Mark 16, 16 through 20, right? All who believe they will cast out demons. This is the sign that will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons. If you do not cast out demons, do you believe? We can turn that around like that. And that's a very big key that you should be asking yourself. Because Jesus didn't look at some of us and say, well, you're good at the belief part. You know, I didn't put anyone in your life that needs deliverance. No, everyone needs deliverance. Uh, We just need to look around uh, and we need to ask and and search people's lives and and help people all who believe they will cast out demons you we can't get around that and if you want to say mark 16 is not in the bible okay well then we'll just go back to um first john 2 6 you know anyone who wants to follow god must walk as jesus walked well what did jesus do preach the gospel healed the sick cast out demons this is our command this is what we will do So I encourage you guys, begin to open the door to casting out demons. I know it's scary. The first time is always the scariest, but um, I would encourage you, if you are like, yes, I believe this, God, I want to walk in deliverance, like show me, help me, Um, I would literally just say a prayer like this, God, I want to deliver people. I want to help people in this way. I want to walk in deliverance like you walked. Um, God, send people uh, to me and open um, people, yeah, I guess send people to me, um, that need deliverance, that need help, that I could help them. And he will, he's just looking for people who are willing. I mean, the moment we said, Hey God, we're leaving our church and we're willing. We want to help people. He started sending people to our house. I mean, no joke. It was like clockwork. You know, we got overwhelmed. 
Um, he is looking for workers because the harvest is plentiful, but what the workers are few. So literally put your name, name on the sign up sheet. Be like, God, I'm ready. I've been preaching the gospel for a long time or whatever, but I want to do deliverance. You know, like open the door for that. He will trust me and look at it for yourself too. Do you have demons? It's okay. I've had demons. Everyone in my family has had demons cast out of them. Um, everyone I've met that I've ministered to has had demons cast out of them. That's close to 200 people. Um, so either, either we've just got lucky with like a, you know, um, with 200 people. But in my opinion, that's a pretty good sample size of who has demons and who doesn't. So anyways, um, I hope this helps you guys. I hope this keeps deliverance simple um, in the idea that again, there's more, there's definitely more. And I could talk hours about our experience, but I just wanted to keep it biblical today. I'm like, this is the base of what deliverance looks like. And what is it? Have the person repent, identify the spirit, cast the demon out in Jesus name. That's it. And I'll just throw in this tidbit. Um, make sure to disciple those people and check up on those people. You know, demons don't just fix all of our problems. If the person and their will and their desire is to still go and lust, demon or not, they will go and do that thing again. So keep that in mind. But anyways, hope this one encouraged you guys. Sorry, I'm a little sick. Sorry, I was coughing. Well, I'm not sick, but um, just trying to get over this cough. But uh, I'm just pray us out. Uh, dear Lord God, thank you so much for just allowing me to speak tonight. Thank you that my voice has actually gotten better uh, over tonight. So thank you, Jesus, um, for working in this podcast. And thank you for the truth that you've lended tonight. And I pray that it would touch people and that, God, you would... Um, set more people on fire to do deliverance or to help others um, to be free. God, you paid for all of our freedom 2,000 plus years ago. Lord, and many of us are still sitting uh, in bondage. God, so um, help us, Lord. Show us the way out. Um, yeah, Lord, and, and uh, set your people free. God, but you need the workers, Lord. The workers are few. Send more workers, God, please. God, I, I ask that you would light a fire in, in um, the seats of the people that are listening to this podcast tonight, that it wouldn't just be a, yeah, okay, that sounds good, and then just forget about it. No, this is a call to action. This is something they said, if you believe, then you should be casting out demons. God, make it clear to us, convict our hearts that we need to be casting out demons because it truly is the power to save some, set someone free from the things that they struggle with so that they can be closer to you and not be hindered by these spirits, Lord. So God, thank you. We just love you, Lord. And um, we ask that you would just bless everyone that is listening tonight. And I pray all this in your mighty name. Amen. Well, until the, uh, uh, what? <laughs> Before this podcast goes too long, I absolutely love you guys. I hope you have a blessed week. Um, we will sh see you shortly on Friday with our uh, ending of the law and also the ending of season four, season five around the corner. Don't forget, um, check us out on our website, jesusoffensive.com. Uh, email us, hello at jesusoffensive.com. Check out our Instagram uh, at jesusoffensive. Um, and uh, yeah, if you'd like to sign up to be notified for when we drop new podcasts, when we drop our new apparel collection, because it's about to be fire, not going to lie, uh, go to jesusoffensive.com forward slash sign dash up. Uh, put your email in there and we will notify you shortly. All right, you guys, love you and uh, I'll see you soon.